So I think as a Run Disney runner, one of the things that you think about the most is being swept, <laughs> is being picked up in a race and not finishing the race for one reason or another, whether it's um, you know something medical or an injury or whatever it may be. I think when you go into a Run Disney race, I think the number one thing on your mind is, am I going to finish? And what happens if I don't? Right? Right. Well, one thing with Run Disney, um, many things with Run Disney, is you spend a lot of money. And for a lot of people, Run Disney um, is their first race. Formally. Yeah, I think Run Disney is an introduction to 5Ks, 10Ks, half marathons for a lot of people. And yeah. it gets very nerve wracking to go to your first experience mm -hmm. or. On the flip side, maybe it's not your first race. Maybe they just did some local races and this is kind of a very, very large event. And what happens if it's hot? Mm -hmm. uh, Florida's hot. Sometimes people are not prepared for that. And there's things that just, um, people come to the Run Disney races and they get caught up in all these what ifs. But the big thing, like Adam said, is the balloon ladies and the cutoff time. So this video today is all about being swept, guys. So guess what? we got swept. <laughs> um, and you know what? We got swept for a reason. We actually went into the race, and we'll go into, de into detail and into depth about it, but we went into the marathon knowing we were going to be swept. Either we were going to leave the race or we were going to be swept. We were going to be picked up. We were going to DNF, do not finish, I think is what they call it. Right. Whatever you want to call it, that's what we were going to do. And we've heard all these stories about the balloon ladies, we'll talk to you about them. And you know, the 16 minute mile pace and all of that. But mostly we want to share with you that being swept and being picked up in a Disney race is not an embarrassment at all. No, and it shouldn't be something that you worry about. I would take that off your list completely uh, if things can happen. You, and sometimes you can worry about, is my training enough? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it has nothing to do with training. I know my first run Disney race, that was on the forefront of my mind is, oh my gosh, what if I don't finish? <laughs> what if I can't finish? What right. if I'm out there on mile six of the half marathon and I just can't keep going? I waited for too many characters. What happens? <laughs> and so there's this big enigma, there's this big mystery or uh, surrounding it. And I have to be honest with you guys, it's interesting, but we're gonna tell you the whole story because we wanna make sure that if you enter a Run Disney race, you have no fear, right? Right, yeah. that is the one thing I would put behind you. Mm -hmm. There's so many other things to focus on. So this video today is about how we got swept uh, and what happened and how they make you feel really great uh, afterwards. Disney is amazing. Like the magic mm -hmm. with anything, with Run Disney, they do this superbly. I thought so. Yes, they really do. So let's go back in time just a little bit. So Kristen and I decided that we were going to be doing the half marathon for last year's marathon weekend. Well, guess 2022. what? 2022. 2022. Guess what? Kristen had just had a baby a couple of months before and she was super ambitious and said, I'm going to do the half marathon. And I said, I love you for that. That's amazing. Let's do it. <laughs> And about two weeks later, my work, I work for a television station and I've run the marathon before because we broadcast it, said, hey, Adam, can you guys do the full marathon as well? And we want you to broadcast it, but just for the first 10 miles. Yeah. And I said, okay, let me talk to Kristen because we're doing the half marathon for sure. So she said, yeah, let's do it, right? You said, right. Let's, let's do it. Let's do the half marathon because that's what we signed up for. That's what we really want to do. Right. And let's just see how far we make it with the um, with the full marathon because honestly, the TV station said, make it to mile 11, which is at the castle, which is the moment we want for broadcasting. And then we'll DNF you, we'll take you out of the course and we'll take you back to the start. Right, and yeah. so because I had only had the baby 10 weeks prior, um, medically, it wasn't encouraged. No, <laughs> I mean, the doctor said, really, you're gonna run? In a full yeah. 
back to back. Yeah. The half marathon, they said, yeah, mm -hmm. thumbs up. You are trained mm -hmm. because I did. I did run a decent amount. I uh, used a Peloton bike also. So I was pretty active, but to run a half and a full back to back on two days was not something they were thrilled about. So that was our plan is I would still come with him to the marathon, but we would uh, just not finish. And and we were gonna we were gonna take we were gonna take the um <laughs> the monorail back to Epcot. We, thought, we were gonna have we some margaritas. Really fun time. Yeah. It was gonna be fantastic. <laughs> if you follow Run Disney Run on Facebook, a lot of people do that. They'll run to Magic Kingdom and then they'll DNF, take the monorail back to Epcot, grab margaritas, and make sure they're there at the finish line to like cheer everybody on. And so we said maybe we'll yeah. do something like that. We'll see. But yeah. you know what? So we made it to um, Magic Kingdom. And I have to say, we were very slow because we were recording live video for television. So every couple of minutes we were stopping and we were getting video, we were getting shots for live television. Live. Mm -hmm. And we made it to Magic Kingdom. And I looked at Kristen and I said, so we can stop here or we can just kind of keep going as far as we can go and just have fun. And what'd you right. say? I said I wasn't done yet. She said she wasn't done. <laughs> so what do you do when your wife says she's not done? You keep going. <laughs> so we did. We kept on going. And I think, like I said, Magic Kingdom was like mile 11, 11 or, or so. 12. And we, um, we pulled up the live stream. We started live streaming for Streaming the Magic. And we said, we're just going to make it as far as we can make it. Right. And we, at that point, we were jogging, kind of walking. Jogging, jogging and walking, kind of walking, jogging, walking. Because our thought was, we were also as taking... we come out of Magic Kingdom, you go behind Magic Kingdom, you come past the Grand Floridian, and then you go down uh, a side road that Disney uses for uh, their cast to uh, transport things. AKA and... the sewage treatment plant. Right. <laughs> and so yeah. we thought, no problem. We'll just kind of jog Bear and Island kind of road. walk. Yeah. And... They'll catch up to us, and we won't even get that far. Yeah, we, we didn't were think wrong. we because we were <laughs> so far behind already. We assumed we were going to be picked up and swept in a couple of miles because we had been right. going real slow, and we'd just been you know yeah, stopping. We and after we left Magic Kingdom, man, we were stopping for every picture stop. We did. We stopped. For we stopped. They had they had one of the <laughs> um, the twenty thousand leagues under the sea vehicles. We stopped right. for that. Um, the Nautilus, we stopped for pictures with Tigger. We stopped for uh, a picture with um, the Up characters, right. remember? <laughs> and we, we didn't think we were going to make it to Animal Kingdom. Um, but we did. Yeah. We made it to Animal Kingdom. And I guess we were jogging faster we than we We were jogging we faster than we thought. So we made, we made it to Animal Kingdom, which going in, it's deceiving. Going into Animal Kingdom, you're at like mile 14. Coming out of Animal Kingdom, you're at like mile 19 or 20. Yeah. So... Uh, we made it into Animal Kingdom, and I was feeling good right about Harambe and right about Everest. Yeah. And Kristen goes, Adam, the balloon ladies are right I behind know. us. <laughs> we were in Animal Kingdom, and, and we were like, just feeling right good. Right like, Everest. We were like, yeah. oh my gosh, like, we're this having is so much great. Fun. We're having so much we're fun. And Kristen of... goes, Adam, Adam, balloon ladies just passed us. Like, they had just, and I went, uh oh. oh. Uh oh, I was like the fun. We were having so much fun, and I went, "The fun is over, guys." Right, because <laughs> we were live on uh, streaming the magic. We yeah. were chatting with people. We were kind yeah. of dancing to the we music. We were dancing and having fun. We were high fiving cast and we'd members. And we'd seen some people we knew, and we were like, "This even, is awesome." We were not even thinking about being in the race. We were just kind of yeah, kind we of like jogging, walking. Yeah, and, and then the um, balloon ladies passed us right about Everest. Right. And so we kind of, like at that point in our heads, we went, oh, Well, well now crap. we have to make decisions. So we started running a little bit because we wanted to get ahead of them. We weren't ready to be we done. We were having a good time at Yeah, that we were having a good time, so we weren't ready to be done. <laughs> so we started jogging a little bit to get ahead of them. Um, and that's when you exit the park. And it was... You're back behind the park. It was hot. Well, yes, by that time now, it's uh, it was late in the morning mm -hmm. and it was the heat coming in and we started kind of debating, hey, we've had a lot of fun and the thought did cross our mind to finish. It did, but you know what? So I remembered that the <laughs> doctor said, 
No, you can do one or the other. Don't you cannot let her do, do it. Yeah. Both. You cannot do the half marathon and the full marathon. And so Kristen is saying, let's just push and go. And I said, nope, I'm going to be <laughs> totally okay with not finishing. And I think in yeah. retrospect, I'm going to give some advice when we're done. In retrospect, we should have left in the park. Maybe we should have. And we should have taken the transportation. I don't transportation, know that they would but... have done that. So they did have medical teams mm -hmm. for kind of along the way. Mm -hmm. And they had... Buses were lined up. They had bicycle yeah. support. And I believe they were medics. Yeah, so when we on left, bicycles, when we left Animal kind Kingdom... Of followed you. When we left Animal Kingdom, and we're going to play some video right now. We left Animal Kingdom and we were behind the balloon ladies right so the video you're watching right now is us behind the balloon ladies i always kristen for some reason thought that the balloon ladies were a hard cut off like right. if you fall behind the balloon ladies they are picking you up in a squad squad car and they're taking you away <laughs> guys that is not no. the case at all they and, are just a timed group of ladies yeah and my understanding is they're not hired by Disney. But so they do wear special. They, they do, do have to maintain a certain yeah. pace to be that designation. And we did overhear the bicycle teams telling the balloon ladies, you're behind. Yeah. You Wait, need to go faster. That was the most interesting thing is mm -hmm. that one of the bikers with the headsets went up to the, one of the balloon ladies and said, you're behind. If you don't pick up your pace, we're going to pick you up. Right. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. and I'm yeah. sure that they are uh, much more cordial along the route, mm -hmm. but he was very stern, like, okay, He was super ladies. stern to the balloon ladies. He, he said, like, you're behind. If you don't pick it up, we're, we're taking you out. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have to yeah. maintain this pace mm -hmm. and they were encouraging people around them, telling them, come on, keep up with me. You can do it. Mm -hmm. And we witness everybody kind of in that back group, encouraging other and saying, you can do it. And I will tell you, I saw plenty of people who that was just the kick in the butt that they needed. And I saw them kind of, I remember one guy, I remember one guy who I, he was there and a, a, one of the, the bikers came up to him and said, you're behind pace, you're gonna get picked up. And he said, like hell I am. And he just kept going. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, you're my new hero, buddy. Right. Like, he said, like hell I am. And he just like, a, uh, like a fire lit under him and he just kept going, mm -hmm. you know? And so, and, and they're not rude, they're not mean at no. all about it. And let me tell you, being that person on that bike is probably the most difficult job of the entire marathon. Right. Because there are so many people who have worked so right. hard and we're at mile 20. I mean, right. you can smell the finish yeah. line and you're mm -hmm. so close. Right. And, and you could see it in people's eyes. Like you could see the people mm -hmm. who were like, just had that determination. Like right. I've worked on this for so long and I am not, and they will come up to you and they'll be like, hey, you're behind pace by a lot. The balloon ladies are up there. You're behind pace. You have to get ahead you of them. You have to keep going. And I, so, there's, there's this point where you're like, it's sad, but it's not. They give, you, they give you a lot of opportunity mm -hmm. to get ahead mm -hmm. of where you need to be. Yeah. So if you fall behind, it's not a... It's not a hard cut. Cut. No, it's not a hard cut. They give you plenty of time and mm -hmm. warning and they will shout it out. And, and they've got these buses strategically placed in certain, I would call them almost like corrals. So they say like, here's a cut point they have, at this intersection. Yeah, they have hard cut points along so the race. So it's not... Yeah. Um, it's not, okay, they passed you, now stop. Mm -hmm. Okay, they passed you, now you stop. Mm -hmm. There's points like... Essentially because, intersections. Yeah, because when we got picked up, we had to wait for a certain one of those cutoff points. So, uh, I mean, so this gives, I, I think for the for the Run Disney Runner, I think this should give you hope. Because even if you fall behind the balloon ladies, guys, it's not over. No. It's not. No. <laughs> you, if you can find that, you know, that motivation inside of you, there's no reason to stop. Now. Yeah. We could have finished 100%, I think that we could have. I told Kristen to stop. She had just had a baby 
and they say that you know the way your uterus is you should not be doing that much running and so i think 100 percent we could have finished i said nope we're stopping right here we're gonna have a water break i'm gonna use the bathroom and we're getting on the bus as i said we didn't train for a marathon we, we didn't, didn't even bring a we gel. Did, we, did, we didn't have the nutrition. I said, right. we're 10 miles farther than we thought we would make it. I said, nope, we're done. But now mm -hmm. that we've talked about what it's like when you're on the road, mm -hmm. let's talk about getting on the bus. Yeah, so what so happened with when us? When they say, okay, you, you're the chosen one. <laughs> you've, you've made it this far, it's great. Yeah. They ask you to stand off to the side of the road. Well, we actually right? went up, we went up to a Run Disney team member and we said, hey guys, we're done. Right. <laughs> we said, we're done. They were kind of lined up there. Yeah, I so said, we hey guys, we're were done. Gonna, we knew they were gonna. And it was a guy on a bike us. and he said, okay, sounds good. And he got on his radio and he said, so it's not this bus that's driving by right now, but the next bus we're gonna, is gonna stop for you guys. Right. And we said, okay, that sounds good. And so we, you know, we yeah. were at a porta potty and we used the restroom and we were kind of like, just kind of decompressing a little bit. Cause, and we weren't really, we weren't sad because no. we knew we weren't gonna finish the marathon. We did, hadn't gone into it thinking that way. We were there to work. And so we waited a little bit, we were sitting around for a little bit and then the bus came up ironically enough guys it wasn't a disney bus it was an orlando city bus it right. was a lynx city bus that picked us right. up and um we have some video i think i'll play it right now of us in the bus right and so, so it obviously when i shot the video i tried to not put anybody's faces but at least gives you an idea of what kind of bus it was. Mm -hmm. uh, so a couple of important air things about that. Air conditioning felt nice. The air conditioning felt very nice. <laughs> so not only was it heavily air conditioned because there was plenty of people who the heat had gotten to them. Mm -hmm. So in the bus, they have limited supplies, not a ton. But you know what they did have, which surprised the heck out of me? Mm -hmm. They had a Disney guest relations cast member right. with Gatorades and waters. Right. I was super surprised. They had a plaid, she was wearing plaids. Yeah. It was a plaids Disney guest relations cast member, like the right. highest echelon of Disney cast relations with Gatorades and waters there for everybody and right. special puke bags because people were throwing up. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. So they yeah. did have some limited mm -hmm. first aid supplies mm -hmm. um, in case, and now obviously the guest relations uh, cast member is not trained in that, but they had limited things like a band aid. I think she had there, like mm -hmm. a little kit, yeah. and the puke bags, and they had the gators and water so that at least you were comfortable. You could sit in that air conditioning, kind of relax, especially if it was a case where you have to leave because you are sick, you're mm -hmm. feeling ill, or maybe you're in a lot of pain. Uh, it at least made it comfortable and that and while we had a little different mindset i know that like we were doing good we were like we were right. texting and like having fun we but were just you know it was a many, somber we mood. realized that everybody who was on there had different reasons and it was very somber it but it, Everybody was smiling at least, and there was some people talking. Not you could, many. You could tell there were some there were some dead dreams on that bus, and it was right. sad. So I mean, obviously that happens, and for many reasons, you know, well, it, whether it be you pulled a muscle or whatever it is, like you could definitely see the mm -hmm. dead dreams on that bus well, of people who really wanted to cross that finish line. And so, is it a happy bus? No, it's not a happy bus, but. <laughs> But is it is it okay? Yes, it's right. Fine. They make yeah. you mm -hmm. still feel valued. Mm -hmm. They still uh, wish you, you know, a good job and congratulate you. And it's very nicely done how they help you onto the bus. You can take your seat and genuinely sitting on the bus, you know, there were people who were chit chatting, like, where are you from? That sort of thing. So you don't feel like completely just demoralized. No, no, no. <laughs> but let me tell you this, guys. So the bus took a really long time. So mm -hmm. the bus goes behind the runners until they can get to a spot where they can actually drive. 
So the bus took a really long time. And that's why I'm telling you, if you're going to DNF, if you're going to not finish, do not finish in a Disney race, it may be advantageous for you to take Disney transportation instead. So that's why I was saying like, maybe Krista and I, had we gotten, um, had we just left the race and taken our bibs off in Animal Kingdom and taken Disney transportation, we probably would have gotten to where we needed to go quicker. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have had that medical aid and all that uh, other acts. We would you know, have never, but they, if they do, we wouldn't have gotten our medal. medal. Yeah, we wouldn't have gotten our medal, but mm -hmm. it did take a really long time. And that's About where- 45 minutes. Yeah, it took a really long time and the bus got lost because, and I don't blame them, the bus got lost because the driver is not a, you know, he was a Lynx bus driver and wasn't used to, you know, Disney roads. And so the bus got lost and yeah. it took a really long time to get back, but they do drop you off at the finish line at Epcot. And Kristen, they take you to a special place. Right, they take you to a section that's behind the finish line. Mm -hmm. So you will not, you cannot, cross the finish line. You, you cannot access any of the area where the I did it. You can't access any of that finish line area. Yeah, you so can access the medical, oh, there's a special medical tent. Mm, for That's them. right. Yeah. As we, after we got off the bus, there's a medical tent just for the people getting off of that bus. They but call it I, a parade bus. But if I can describe where it is, it's just after, um, you know, where it's they give you your challenge you medals. Your, where the challenge medals is, it's just after that and the food station. The gear bags. And the gear bags, yeah. And you know what's really unique about this location is you know how they line up the porta potties? There's hundreds of porta potties. Right. So Disney is ingenious with this. They line up this location and there's one missing porta potty. Yeah. And so literally, you join the rest of the runners and nobody knows where you came from. You come from between a porta right. potty and you join the running population. Oh, by the way, when you step yeah. off the bus, they give you your medal. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's no questions asked. Uh, and nope. honestly, they are asking you, are you okay? Is there mm -hmm. anything we can help you yep. with? Mm -hmm. uh, they do give you the same box of snacks. Snacks and food. And, food. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are in my opinion, kind of over the top of, are you okay? Yeah, is everything okay? They wanna make sure you're fine. Right. They give mm -hmm. you your medal. Yeah. And then you enter the running population almost by secret. Right. Like literally in between a couple yeah. of porta potties, you just kind of enter the yeah. where the runners, right yeah. before where the gear pickup is. Right. It's crazy, you just enter there and then Chris and I, we went and got a couple of beers. You wouldn't even know that we came from the finish line or somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think really what we wanna highlight about this video is, guys, there is no shame in not finishing a Run Disney race. You know what the shame is, is not starting. Right. <laughs> and so right. I, I have major props and just major, major, major appreciation for everybody who starts a race. And guys, I don't want you to have any fears at all about not being able to finish because it doesn't matter. Right. It just matters that you tried and that you, you know, you did your best. But what's really great about Disney is they do such an amazing job at Run right. Disney with taking care of people who can't finish the race. Well, I think that there's always a nervous feeling that you've done something wrong. And there are plenty of athletes who train hours and hours and hours and considered elite who sometimes don't finish. Perfect example. Mm -hmm. So a couple of years ago, I always cover the races here for my new station. We covered the winner who normally wins, he DNF'd. Yeah. The guy who normally wins the marathon said about three quarters of the way through, he said, not gonna happen. Yeah. And he just stopped and he didn't finish the race. It happens. The guy could have yeah. finished the race in three hours but right. instead he DNF'd and he got picked up. Yeah. It happens to everybody, guys. So right. don't let you don't don't let it worry you at all. Yeah. If if ultimately you're... you can finish. Mm -hmm. That is not the moral of the story today. Right. Yeah. The moral of the story is we believe you can finish. Oh, I have a, but all the, the faith in the world, yeah. But in the moments where um maybe you fell, we see people Maybe who you pull the muscle. Yeah, we see um, people working muscles out along the way. Something yeah. happens that you don't foresee. And mm -hmm. we just want you to know that if those situations happen, don't let it stress you out. 
just know that they will take care of you. All will be fine. So I put your, your energy into your training and focus on that and about having a good time and take this whole experience off your list of worries. And if you don't finish, <laughs> you're still a winner. Right, right. <laughs> because you started it and you that is the biggest <laughs> challenge of right. all, right? I think I yeah. I was a little nervous about it myself mm -hmm. when we made this decision and I'm really happy that we we did. I'm glad that we were able to get a couple of clips uh, to be able to show on this video and to talk about this experience because I guarantee you that is the question that you see more than anything for people who go to the Run Disney events is what are the balloon ladies? What happens if you don't finish? And a lot of that concern. Well, this video is about wiping that away, knowing that you can finish. And sometimes if you don't, ha you can't, it's okay because this is what happens. Guys, please, in the comments, we would love to hear what are your greatest fears about a Run Disney race? What is keeping you from entering that Run Disney race? Because I know there are a million Disney fans out there who would give anything to be able to enter their Run Disney race because right. it's part of the Disney culture. So in the comments, I would love to hear what are your greatest fears about entering a Run Disney race because I'm going to I'm going to respond to your comments and I'm going to tell you that you don't have to worry. Please, you know, or tell sign us up. If you if you ever didn't finish. Yeah, we'd love yeah. to hear your stories. Or maybe you interacted with the balloon ladies. Yeah. That's what this video is about, mm -hmm. you know, everybody knowing that it's honestly a positive experience yeah and there's no worries about that we see a lot of videos out there and a lot of vlogs out there about run disney and i don't know if though we've ever seen one about not finishing and i think it's kind of like that um that cliche thing of like oh we don't want to talk about nope no that's not it at all like right. we you know that that has there's no negative connotation with not finishing and i think that's the biggest thing with Wish Upon a Run that we want to make um, sure that all of our Wish Upon a Runners know. Right. Yeah. So guys, thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you um, gained some insight about Run Disney. Please, if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, please hit that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up if you're enjoying today's video. Um, until next time, guys. Please, happy running. We'd love to hear about your running stories and about um, you know, your training and your journey for the marathon. Please comment if you have anything you want to comment about. We're going to keep our running POVs going. <laughs>